Results from the Houston Astrodome, where the Florida Fighting Gators played the Houston Cougars. Gator Highlights with Charlie Pell are brought to you by Life Insurance, Chrysler, Atlantic Bank, Pizza Hut, Scott Production Credit Association, and Federal Land Banks of Florida, Likes, and Dairy Farmers Incorporated. And I think defensively. I think they battled extremely hard. I think they came up with big play after big play, and uh, still, we gave them so much. We just gave them so much with some uh, mental uh, breakdowns and some penalties that uh, I, I, I really disappointed in that, and it reflected on the way I prepared the football team, and these are things that I was skeptical about because of our youth, because of the lack of a scrimmage situation, but uh, uh, hang, we're just going back to work. Hello, everyone, from the Houston Astrodome in Houston, Texas. I'm Paul Cameron. You've just heard what head coach Charlie Pell had to say about the Houston-Florida game. We'll be back to talk more with Coach Pell and look at the highlights in just a minute. Short on the scoreboard, but a team that was young, aggressive, and a lot of effort out there. They gave tremendous effort, Paul. I'm very proud of the way they performed. They didn't give up. They didn't let up. And I, We moved the football. We moved the football well enough to be successful. We just didn't move it consistently enough, and there were breakdowns on our part that I know we can correct and help our players more during this week's preparation for Georgia Tech. We made so many execution-type errors that we're going to have to correct, and I re that reflects on my teaching, and we've got a lot of work to do. First half highlights, Coach. We lost a toss and elected to kick off. Donnie Van Wee, we got some excitement right away. Donnie Van Wee's a freshman from Eastside High School. He kicks to the two-yard line. They had mishandled the snap and watched Yancey Sutton from Tallahassee Leon on the special kickoff unit down. There's Joe Vore from Titusville, Florida down on the special unit. Our special kickoff team, special putt, putt team, and special kickoff uh, coverage team do a great job. And they, uh, we've got them backed up on the one-yard line. That's a great way to start the 1979 season. They, we force them to punt, and Chris Collinsworth gets a good return of about 27, 23 yards here. And uh, we've got good blocking. There's Yancey Sutton making a big play. Bucks two of them. Great play, Yancey. And there, uh, oh, I think we kind of quipped uh, there. In fact, we had two quips on the punt return. And we got penalized. Uh, and that was very expensive. We lost the 23-yard return plus a 30-yard penalty. And that was very costly. First play in the line of scrimmage. Tim Groves, the quarterback. Tim from Orlando, Florida. It's nothing but just a sprint run all the way. We wanted to make sure we didn't have on the first snap of the game, not have any exchange problems and handoff problems, and it worked out pretty well. John L. Brown, freshman from Gainesville High School, first play in college as a freshman tailback, and blocking over there was Jim Subert. Blocking over there was Bill Bennick. Wally Huff at offensive center. Wally from Tampa. There's Tim Grove sprinting out now and getting the ball to James Jones, number 88. James from Papano Ely High School. And he's a great football player and playing in his first game as a freshman. Harold Galloway over to congratulate him. Harold from McClinney. There's Bill Bell from Wheaton, Maryland, a senior tight end. We don't have a good, uh, we're in good field goal position here in our first possession, but we kind of uh, mishandle the, we don't get it just right. And uh, they take over in pretty good field position. We lose a scoring opportunity, but by golly, we got a good start. They throw deep, try for the home run, and watch Juan Collins. Juan Collins, Hollywood Hill, Bill Philrell over there to congratulate him. Chuck Hatch, Derek Burgess from Brandon, Florida, all over there to congratulate their teammate. Here we are on the on the Florida 30-yard line. We're on a bootleg pattern. Tim decides to keep, picks up very good yardage there. Good blocking there by Jim Subers. Jim is from Miami, Florida, number 75. Joe Wickline, number 70. Good slow-mo action here. Jim Suber's pulling around. His job is to break, uh, block the contain. Tim sees his people covered and very wisely elects to run the football. I was very pleased with Tim Groves, the way he performed as a quarterback. There's the Bill Bell giving extra effort. And unfortunately, there's David Galloway, who was injured on our third play and uh, will miss... Uh, Definitely out for the season now, unfortunately. And David is a super football player, a super young man. I'm going to uh, go up and see him uh, just after the show and uh, see how he's doing. That was 
there was another freshman, redshirt freshman, Chris Faulkner, catching that ball. Well thrown football. We threw the ball well. There's Chris Collinsworth making his uh, uh, very good catch. Very good catch there. Good pass protection by that offensive line. Offensive lineman there was Tim Groves on a spread out pass. Good blocking by our tail back there. Frank Holloway's in the ball game now at 37. He hasn't played football in two years. Touchdown, Gators. First one for the 79 season. And I assure you, it's an encouraging thing. And there's a lot of orange. We had the ball, football there, 15 plays, went 86 yards, and kept the football for six minutes and two seconds. Great job. Uh, Phil Farr, a uh, good snap. Uh, Brian Clark from Sarasota on extra point. Phil Farr is a specialty snapper from Ocala Forest and a good football player. Tim Golden from Fort Lauderdale coming in, making a big play. Good pressure from the backside. There's Dozier Hinton stepping in there, number 75. Doc Lucky's number 72. What's the pursuit and pressure here by Tim Golden again on the slow-mo? There's number 66, Robin Fisher in there, and there's a great Florida cheerleader. Boy, did they ever work hard. I think you're going to see something here that gets you. Good hands up, Dozier. Dozier Hinton. Great interception by David Little from Miami, Florida. Junior linebacker, great football player, good leader. He's what the linebacker should is supposed to be. He and Scott Bradley, the best pair of linebackers in Southeastern Conference, bar none. Great pressure there. Dozier very alertly getting his hands up. Doc Lucky tips the football, enables it. And there's uh, there's Kyle Coburn in the ball game. We're glad Kyle got a little hip pointer, but he was playing. Good play by Doc Lucky. But I want you, want you to notice there that 57, Tim Golden put pressure on him, uh, coming in hard. A good dominating on the front line, defensive line there, and, of course, enabling Doc to come up with the big play. There's 57. He's coming in with some pressure. Chuck Hatch, great run support. Chuck Hatch is a senior strong safety from Brantford and a great football player, one of our game captains. David Little was also one of our game captains. They did a great job. Nap Green from Gainesville was a game captain for our special unit. Great play by Tim Golden, keeping his feet, and he's doing it against some good players. That's good execution by Houston. They're tied in, work for some open area, and, of course, our people were there uh, keeping the game to a minimum. Unfortunately, this was Houston's last possession of the half, and uh, we helped them along. There's another penalty. We gave them – we got a roughing the passer penalty. We got a jumping off sides. I still believe we were pulled off sides, and I was just asking the referee for some explanation on three judgment calls when Houston was driving right before the half. It seemed a little weird that all three judgment calls would go against us, Here's a play, great play by their University of Houston, and we were coming up to contain the football, and they drop it over us. Uh, you know, it's going to happen sometime, but we put ourselves in that situation, and they that, didn't have to work for it. That's the half. There is the first half, and we led 7 to nothing. I was very pleased to see our team come out and get, get the lead. But in the closing drive at the half, the University of Houston was helped so much by us giving them three penalties and three yardage, free yardage, that they didn't have to sweat for, they didn't have to bleed for, and I don't think that's good preparation on our coaching, you know, on my part. And uh, I think that our football team played as well that first half as I could have ever hoped and dreamed since we had so many young people. But uh, I tell you, uh, we, can, we can gain and benefit from that type of uh, first half, and we can build on that. High score, seven all. Football is very important to the University of Florida, and so is the academic life of players and all students. Each week, we'll look at a player and his life at University of Florida. In addition, we'll feature a great Gator supporter. This week, tackle Bill Bennick and Mr. Gator Booster, Fred Mastioka. This six foot four, 260 pound weightlifter is Bill Bennick, offensive tackle for the Gators. He's 22 years old and a senior at the University of Florida. Bill's major is business administration, and he's happy with his choice. I know the, the business administration college is a, is a very good school. I say it's one of the top in the country, and um, I get a good background on my accounting and my finance and all things I'll need for business later on in life. It's, it's tough. It's competitive, but um, it's good. It would be good for a job when I go out to look for a job at the end of my senior year. Bill knows a degree in the graduate program in the College of Business Administration is highly marketable. The program was recently ranked among the top 17 in the world. The college not only has an outstanding teaching program, it provides many services to the state through such centers as the Bureau of Business and Economic Research. The Bureau compiles and publishes Florida business and population statistics and issues economic indicators which are used by business, industry, and government. Well, after I finish my MBA, I hope to uh, 
find a management job maybe in a large corporation or maybe even start my own business. Bill says the University of Florida has just about everything he likes. Pretty girls, uh, sunshine, um, a great athletic program, and I'm getting a good education and meeting some really good friends I'll have for life. That's the first of several gridiron favorites from today's Fighting Gators. Now let's turn the scoreboard back a few years and meet one of Florida's past greats. Some call him Mr. Gator Booster, and maybe Fred Monstioka's earned that title from sheer hard work and loyalty to the Gator football program. He holds a single game record for seven or more punts with a 53-yard average and the distinction of playing with the team known as the Golden Error. They call it the Golden Error, E-R-R-O-R. They had a, an 0 and 13 record. Fred is president of Florida Lime of Ocala and is married to a converted FSU Seminole. His daughters, Ann, a 1975 UF graduate, and Alice, currently a junior, are the family's future Gator Boosters. Wife Yvonne's nickname is Blue, and Fred certainly is Mr. Orange. The more I became involved in the, in the uh, programs of, of, of the Athletic Association, the more aware I became that it was uh, important to, that everyone support the program, support the university as a whole. Gator alumnus, Fred Monstioka. At halftime, University of Florida and the ninth-ranked team in the nation, the Houston Cougars. What do you tell your kids at halftime? I think our adjustments were, were, were sound uh, going out the second half, uh, going into the second half, and, and I really didn't have any question in my mind that we would be able to come back and be successful against University of Houston. Uh, but unfortunately, we gave up too much free real estate because we did not execute properly, and, and I didn't have the team well enough prepared uh, to eliminate those... Uh, uh, mental mistakes and those penalties. So let's take a look at the second half. We open it up and of course uh, we get the football. We run a little motion here and, and I honestly believe our game plan was our, we, we just actually probably had too much offense, too many plays because we spent a lot of practice time on plays that we didn't have a chance to run. There's John Hill Brown on a very fine run, but Chris Collinsworth doing a good job blocking downfield. John Whitaker at fullback doing a good job. Love to see that orange in the stands, Paul. That gummit, oh, they yeah. were a great group that followed the Gators to Houston. We want to thank each one of you personally for taking the time. And those that sent the telegrams, the letters, and best wishes to the players, uh, it's just meaningful to the football team to see this kind of support and this type of loyalty. They'll respond in 100 times fold. Great play by our defensive front wall. Juan Collins pick gets a fumble. Great pressure over there by that defensive right side. That's Dozier heading <laughs> and uh, our linebackers and Yancey Sutton. And I tell you, Robin Fisher, the nose guard. Robin's mama came all the way to Houston to see him play. Got there after the ball game. Great play. Good attack there by our right side. Doc Lucky attacking over there. And there's Joe Vore, I believe it is, in there right now. Doing a good job. We are still running a little motion. We changed our formations. Good play on a misdirection. John L. Brown, good move. Good blocking down there by a tight end. I believe that was James Jones, number 88. Uh, I believe that was who it was that made the key block there and allowed John L. to pick up that extra yard. Good execution by our quarterback. They had the end coming hard. And watch how the, the left side there, Bill Bennett, Jim Subers. There's uh, Harold Galloway pulling on the play. And I tell you what, uh, that play right there uh, was one of our better plays. We may not have run it enough. It's our counter option series, off of our series. Houston's got the football here. They've got a new quarterback in that big old tall drink of water else. We hadn't seen him. He played a little bit against UCLA in the last quarter, but this is their longest game of the, of the game. They 22 yards. And when uh, University of Houston can't gain more than 22 yards on a play, uh, that's their longest game of the evening. You, you can have a lot of pride. What we do about it. A good bootleg pass there. There's Harold Galloway pulling on protection. Great catch there by James Jones again. He had two, two receptions for the evening. Both of them were super catches. I think you're going to see a lot of him. Great looking orange there. A lot of good fan. Dr. and Ms. Marston were along with the team, and I tell you, it's a good sight to see President Marston in the dressing room after that game. I know the players appreciate it and appreciate his leadership. There's a slow-mo on that. Good pass protection by our offensive lineman. I want to say something about old Dozer heading. They get a, they execute very well there. Good reaction there by, by Derek Burgess and uh, Chuck Hatch. That was a well-executed play from the University of Houston. Got to give him credit for that. He knows how to throw the ball. Sure, and that uh, that's that's a youngster. Well, by gosh, they aren't on our schedule now. Somebody else is going to have to worry about him now. <laughs> I'd sure like to play those rascals in November when this team matures and gets it all. 
all uh, cranked up. There's Scott Bradley. Great second effort, Scott. Great second effort by Scott Bradley downfield. Great football player, Scott. That got it. Their quarterback keeping it, finding a little crack. We playing in the dirt down there. Reminds me of being back on Sand Mountain. But uh, <laughs> I think our player did a good job there. That guy, we gave him field position. They got the 14 points. Now they're ahead 14 to 7. Now what will we do? Still early in the fourth quarter, though. Early in the fourth quarter, and our team kept battling, kept struggling, and trying to get something going. John Whitaker, that blame it, uh, defensive tackle last year running the football well. John's going to get better every day. He's going to get better every game. Terry Williams will be back next week. Frank Holloway played well at fullback, and that's a big encouragement for us. There's, old, there's a Harold Galloway pulling around again. John uh, had 66 yards uh, on the night, Coach. Again, I don't know what we graded yet. Our coaches haven't had a chance to grade the film yet. We didn't get back till 3 o'clock this morning. But uh, there's a well-executed pass play. Tim Grove's on the sprint out. He does it very well. Bill Bell over congratulated. Saw a lot of that last night. They were, they were caring about each other's uh, coming a long way. Uh, caring how they do. Great scrambling here. Here's a clutch play. A lot of poise here. Good blocking there by, by James Jones. Seeing Tim scramble, he went ahead and made a key block, picked up a first down, and you can see the pride and the one that's beginning to develop. Tim uh, took, a, took a lot of good... Good hits last night. He held up well under pressure. And here he is scrambling around. He's a good athlete. What's that effort there by number 70? That was Joe Wickline. Plus Joe he, Wickline. Bill Benning. He gets us a first down. Trying here. to get downfield. Keeps that drive alive with the first down. Big first down. This is late. This is late in the fourth quarter, actually in the uh, middle of the fourth quarter. Tip off there to Carl Prelo. Carl Prelo.